Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by iFixit. You can fix it, and iFixit makes it easy with step by step repair guides, high quality replacement parts, and all the tools you'll need. For $10 off your purchase of $50 or more, go to iFixit.com slash twit and enter the code AAA at checkout. And by Ting.com. Ting is a mobile phone service that makes sense. Save money with Ting. Pay for what you use, doesn't require a contract, and offers unlimited devices on one pooled plan. To save $25 on your first Ting device, visit allaboutandroid.ting.com. That's allaboutandroid.ting.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of All About Android, episode 129, recorded on Tuesday, October 1st, 2013. We are your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. I'm Ron Richards. And Gina... Tra oh, wait a oh. minute. Hey, everybody. My Whoa. name is Shannon Moores. You're, you're out Gina-ing <laughs> Gina today. Oh, no, I can is never that a, out Gina Gina. Is that a verb, Gina -ing? I think you just made it a verb. There <laughs> okay, you go. Well, there yeah. we go. Yeah. <laughs> Shannon Moores, before you buy, hack five... All over the internet. Yeah, pretty much. It's awesome having you on I the try. show. We're honored to <laughs> have you. you. Yeah, no, Thank it's you. great. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Somebody in the chat room, I think it was last week, was like, why don't you have Shannon on? And I was like, seriously, that hasn't happened already? <laughs> and she's why always, and it's always like why. she's always here walking around before I know. we start. It's like, and it's why? like, oh, she's right here. I'm like it's lingering like behind yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> you don't yeah. know it, but I'm like crawling around behind you during Oh, I know it. And now it's Yeah, and I have to like just kind of focus. Yeah, just like, what is Shannon doing right now? It's awkward. So instead of lingering behind the stage, now you're on the stage. I and am, yeah. To have you here. Yeah, yeah, me too. Thank you. Absolutely. What phone do you uh, use on a daily basis? Um, I use my Nexus 4 on a daily basis. Excellent. This is my still baby. It? With the, my yeah, I still like it quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Nexus 4, high five. yeah. What? Oh, Opa. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how about a Galaxy Nexus iPhone? Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, I don't have a sparkly so case like that though. Yeah. See, this is I'm cool. Not a lady. This is where it's at. Sparkly cases. Yeah. What? Yeah, I, I, I had to do something girly. All right. Mm -hmm. you know, Fair enough. It happens. Mm -hmm. it does, does it do anything fancy like wireless charging or, or yeah, you know, plug yeah, it into the wall? Or Jason, it's I have sparkles. one of those wireless chargers oh. for it. It works through the case, which is great. Oh, that's cool. You never okay. have to take it off. Excellent. Yeah, it's fun. Awesome. <laughs> well, um, yeah, everybody seems pretty darn satisfied with their Nexus 4s still yeah. a I've year had no later. Problem. I had a weird thing with my Nexus 4 recently where, like, I was getting super crazy battery drain. Like, oh, really? I, like I maybe made really? maybe, like, four hours on a full charge. I was like, what Ooh, is going on? And bad. then, like, yesterday I made... 12 hours. Like, so it's still, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I think there was like an app that was, app, yeah, yeah, I think something was going on. I did reboot it a couple of times, but like hmm. I rebooted it and still had the crazy battery drain, but the past two days I've got like super long life. So I don't know what's going on. Ooh. It's not uh, the app that you chose in the arena, is it, Ron? No. Because <laughs> I just picked that. that I, just picked, out I just picked that like an hour ago. So okay. There's no way that could be. Right. No, no, I'm kidding. All right, <laughs> definitely not then. Uh, so it was uh, kind of a slow news week, but there's some stuff to talk about. We'll be discussing benchmarks and Ooh. the importance of benchmarking <laughs> devices. If that if that doesn't tell you how this week's show is going to be, like, hey, we're doing benchmarking. It's like, all right. I know five people were like, I'm going to eat dinner. Uh, I wouldn't have led with the benchmarking. That's okay, just me. would you I'm have led saying. with new Kindle? Fires? I would have led to the Kindle Fires. Okay, so, well, so there we go. Exciting. There we go. Uh, a bunch of apps. See, and I that think kind of sounds the... like a catch-all, but it's kind of true the way they were all pushed out. And I think you're day. burying the lead with a bunch of apps. Really? I think that's the I think that's the story of this episode. Excellent. Well, I'm happy you were so excited about the <laughs> I apps. I really am. I can't There's wait. There's some cool stuff yeah, in there. Yeah. Uh, and other stuff. That's my catch-all for everything else. <laughs> stuff. Let's jump into the news. So oh, please, I, please, Jason, tell I, me about the I, benchmarks. I teased, I teased something, something epic, and that was benchmarking. <laughs> so I know you, you are all still watching at this point. Uh, but this is kind of an interesting story, and it harkens back to something we had uh, discussed yep. on the show a few months back. Ars Technica's Ron Amadio uh, made an interesting discovery when he was reviewing the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. There's some special sauce on the device that's basically gaming the benchmark tests. Uh, he explains that in normal app usage, the phone shuts off inactive cores and throttles the speed of the device down to conserve power. That's what you get when you run 99% of your apps on the device. When a large number of benchmarking apps are launched, 
uh, the kind of activity changes. It recognizes that you're running a benchmarking app and activates all the cores and ramps them up to top speed. Now, this recognition happened by way of the device recognizing the package names of those apps. So it's actually programmed kind of inside of it to Hard. recognize the name of these different benchmarking apps like Geekbench um, and Quadrant and all those kind of apps. And then once it sees that, it, it does this, this change in the back end. So uh, what Ron did, Ron Amadio, he renamed the Geekbench benchmarking app to Stealthbench. And sure <laughs> enough, the phone ran the app in normal mode, Jeez. giving Ron a true look at the untainted benchmarking specs. And after running comparisons, the Note 3 was goosing the numbers by 20% or so. Um, what, what he found kind of strange was the untainted numbers still have the Note 3 coming out ahead of what is likely the closest competitor at the moment, the G2. Uh, so it still came out ahead there. Don't know how that compares to something like the iPhone 5S or whatever. But um, I don't know. So benchmark uh, steroids. <laughs> so, giving steroids to your benchmarking uh, stats. What do we think? Important, not important? This well, makes me so mad. It? I mean, it's yes. it's, it's uh, dishonest. And it's yeah. I mean, it's like, hey, so if they're actively saying we're going to detect the benchmarking app and then activate all the cores to make it look marginally better, why would you even do that? Mm -hmm. Like the audience that would that would notice this and care, you know, I mean, I, unless I could understand if it was like the Galaxy S4 where it was so below in that curve and it needed to jump up, yeah. but like- Well, speaking of the S4, this is where it's happened before. It yeah. happened with the S4 back in May or, yep. you know, mm -hmm. a few months ago anyways. So this isn't the first time. Obviously Samsung, this is kind of part of what they do now, Ron also said that it's very possible that the Note 10 tablet has similar stuff going on and that he's going to include that in his review later today, I believe. But, um, I mean, on one hand, I, I agree with you completely. On the other hand, what they're doing is they're not showing you numbers that aren't accurate. Right. They're not representing numbers that the device can't achieve. But what they're doing is they're showing you, like, peak performance, and that's in comparison to what other devices get when you run this, which is kind of... Normal. Just everyday normal yeah. performance. I don't know. What, I don't know who that was. That was a robot. What was going on? <laughs> freaked me out a little bit. That was Samsung calling. So yeah, I'm, I'm really cut, cut, cut the feed. Cut the feed. <laughs> <laughs> They're onto us. Well, have they? I mean, have they been called out to respond? Have they kind of you know like? The, uh, I mean, I haven't heard a response from Samsung on this. Gotta imagine somebody yeah, at Samsung today, read this and it's like, update. damn that audio. Like, <laughs> 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 you know, like yeah. it's so dishonest. It feels like they're just putting out false advertising of their products. I mean, I know that their CPUs can hit this, but. <laughs> Personally, I don't check benchmarking whenever I choose a phone. I just look at the CPU and I right. look at, you know, the specs of the phone all in all. Mm -hmm. But it's just dishonest. It's well, not the, cool to advertise that it's different. The, th the thing that I, I, I take less offense at the adjusting and ramping up all the cores and that sort of thing. And what I take more offense at is the hard coding app names yeah. to then trigger that behavior because that shows premeditation. Yep. That shows that you are trying to do something or f fool someone or hide something or change something. And that's what's weird. Yeah. It's the premeditation behind this that is that comes off not cool. Now, Ira Sockman, SJ, in the chat room, does point out something that uh, kind of came up in my reading around as well, uh, poking around about this story, which is that this kind of thing has been happening on the PC side of things. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. For years. Oh, no, I remember. Yeah, I remember running uh, benchmarks on processors and stuff like that. Yeah. Ira, Ira says it could potentially see the other side of the argument. Many benchmarks test parameters that mean very little in the real world, says Ira. So they could be said to be playing the game of the benchmark maker. Uh, so I... I guess I'm trying to understand that. So is that to say that if everybody else plays the yeah. same game, then... Yeah. But... I mean, I but, but again, how often are you like, hey, I got a new phone. I ran those benchmarks. Well, I you mean, know, like, yeah, that's, 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 that's what I'm saying. That's what I don't understand. It just seems completely. so petty. It mm -hmm. just seemed like what the, what benefit does this get you, especially when you're already ahead of your competitor? Mm -hmm. If your phone is as cool as you say it is, why, why do you, you need, need to? to do this? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Couldn't have said it better. Well, not, not to mention real-world experience... Anytime I review a device, and I'm sure this is the mm -hmm. same for you and probably everybody that, that reviews devices on Before You Buy, for me, what's important is when I use it for a week or two weeks as my yes. daily device, and I do use it in the ways that I use my own device, 
Uh, how does it perform? How does yeah. it sync up all of these different things? And how does it, you know, does you it slow down when I play games? Yeah. And do, does it do these things? I never benchmark. And then sometimes I have to ask myself, like, should I be? Is that how you do an exhaustive kind of review of these devices? But ultimately, that's that still wouldn't be what really matters to me. If it benchmarked high but still had a crappy kind of yep. user experience, I would still rate it lower mm -hmm. because I'd say, well, it should do a lot better than it does. So yep. I don't know how much it's benchmarking just it's really just is. It's just goosing numbers to try to increase value. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. uh, that's wacky. But uh, wacky. Well, speaking of wacky, <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, a chapter from the wacky file, uh, Google has launched... Um, three Google Play vending machines in Tokyo. Um, and <laughs> Sign you gotta, of things to come. You, you got to see this to believe it. Of course, it comes <laughs> complete with uh, smiling uh, models next to the photo. But um, as we can see here, the, they've launched an NFC-enabled vending machine that allows users to purchase 18 different games. And what you're able to do is, can you zoom in on that picture, Chad, so we show the smiling faces? There you go. Um, <laughs> what you basically do is you tap your phone to, you select your app and you tap your phone to the vending machine and then you can purchase the game via that way. Because going to the Google Play Store is too hard. I just don't, yeah, and, I, don't, yeah I don't understand. And I feel like um, mm. also like if you don't have a Nexus phone, there are going to be attached Nexus phones that let you try out the game so you can try them out. And there will also be Google employees on hand to help people with the vending machine. I feel like if you need employees to be on hand to help with the vending machine, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, right. So, but lots of questions about this. What is the, I mean, it looks like they're selling phone. They might, possibly might be selling phones through it, which is kind of interesting and weird. But if you have a phone already, you can just tap it and do it. How do you decide which ones are, how are they deciding which ones are they selling? Why are they doing that? Why is it just games and not apps? It's a whole bunch of questions. It's neat nice. technology, but um, but yeah. So. Oh, it's so funny. I love this idea. <laughs> it's weird. It's just, it's so, it's so Japanese. Yes, it's like, very Japanese. They the do like the vending machine, machines. They yeah. do, yeah. And yeah. I, I love the fact that Google is wasting money on having an employee there to help passerby anytime you need one. It seems like such that's, a waste. That's what's so kooky. <laughs> yeah. Like I could, I could actually see something like this in an airport. Well, we already have it. We have those Best Buy vending machines mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Right, so, like, right. Why but, with yeah, that, yeah. but with apps and games, that yeah. actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it's not the worst idea in the world. Because, yeah. I mean, granted, yes, it's very easy to go into the Play Store and search and navigate yeah. through games. Yeah. But if you're just walking by and you're like, man, I'm going to be locked on this plane for three hours, and you see this thing and this really, you know, this nice uh, appealing, you know, s snapshot of a game that just yeah. catches your eye, it's pretty easy to go over there and go, yeah, just to... Okay. It is I've nice it. that they say that you can you can kind of test it out before yeah. you yeah. purchase. Yeah. So that's Still, pretty cool. Yes. Still interesting. Strange. But completely silly and yeah. Yeah. Uh, totally Japanese. And like just those, like those... it doesn't surprise me at all that so like a a Google Play video game vending machine exists yeah, in just, Japan. Just those jumpsuits alone, those Google Play jumpsuits. I, mean, <laughs> I wonder that's how they choose styling. the games. Yeah. Like, do well, yeah, do they have to pay to be on this thing? Well, so Who knows? Yeah, That'd I mean, because that's a great placement. I mean, it's clearly, you know, so, but I don't know, it's strange. <laughs> She's very happy to be there. I think I should um, go to Japan on Twitch Dime to test oh, yeah. this. I agree. Yeah. I think we all <laughs> for should. For all about Android. There you go, there's an approval. <laughs> this is Jason's approval. Go for yep. it. Yes. Go for it. Real quick here, some glass... Information, the glass some, beat. Some update. Yeah, I feel like every week now it's it's making it into the Just show. Just gonna get more. First, third-party apps uh, may be coming to the next glass update, which is XE10. Uh, many sources are confirming to both Geek.com and and other places that developers will finally have access to the GDK, which is the Glass Developers Kit. That basically means that they can make apps that do more than just things like push and retrieve images, videos, and uh, and, you know, like messages through the Mirror API, which is what they have access to now. The GDK means de developers will finally have access to mo the motion tracking sensors of the, of the device, creating customized voice commands for launching, launching their app from the main menu. And um, it's also said to uh, said that you can expect some sort of a timed announcement from Google when this does happen, where they'll reveal some of the developers that they've been working directly with uh, to do all these kind of things and show you exactly what's possible. So exciting, potentially exciting stuff it's, uh, it's sometime gotta, in October. Yeah, it's got to happen. It's got to happen mm -hmm. for Glass to develop as a platform. They need to get more people creating apps. And, and they're really it, ramping yeah. up for that yeah. kind of consumer consumer launch. It's feeling more and more 
year, even though it's probably still going to be another year. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. Well, you know, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be surprised this time next year. Oh, we, I totally believe it. To- you know, and I was actually thinking, I was thinking really about good. Glass yesterday because I was, I was going to work and I was on in the BART station in San Francisco and two cops were chasing some dude and then they caught him and they were walking him back. And um, one of the cops had, didn't have Glass on, but had a pair of sunglasses with a camera oh. attached to the glasses and the wire running down. And, mm. and I, clearly, you know, the the same as the police car camera facing the thing. But it was clear, you know, it was a, it was a camera. It was a video camera. So I was like, wow, it, they could be wearing glass. They could be doing that with glass. Maybe, like, it, would, yeah. maybe it was recon. Yeah, Have maybe, you heard yeah. of the recon no, glasses? No, it was just yeah. another <laughs> competitor. Oh, so. yeah. Glass, glass is not the only uh, yeah. glass in town. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. but, but the thought is like, wow. Like, and I didn't even bat an eye at it. Like yeah. when I saw it, like it wasn't until I'm like, oh wait, that guy's got a camera on his more. face. Yeah, so. yeah, it's starting to become become the norm. I've yeah. been seeing more and more Google Glass, not just because we live in the Bay Area, but just because probably partially more yeah. developers are. Yeah. Mm, yeah, but you're seeing more developers take them out in the wild and test them out day to day, yeah. and it's really interesting. I can't wait to see it on the consumer market. I'm yeah. really interested in the price point, and I really need to see some more development in it. Yep. Well, if you want to try on glass for yourself, I do. And you didn't just ask me to bring in the pair that I have to work, so you can do that. <laughs> you could try it on uh, because glass is uh, currently starting a cross country tour. <laughs> so you can go try glass, chat with a glass team about how cool glass is, and indulge yourself with Google's uh, award nominated. I don't know if they've ever been nominated for their food and drink, but. <laughs> It's pretty good at Google. So there you go. They'll have it for you to eat and drink when you get there. Uh, First stop is Durham on October 5th. They're hitting a number of places around the U.S. anyways so that you can, you know, get get your nerd on and go. My grandma lives in. an event to try on a pair of glass, I guess. My grandma lives in good old North Carolina, the Tar Heel State. So I kind of want her to go there and try on Google Glass because she's all about like, no, it's it's not respecting my privacy and all that. Uh, (laughs) She would be a perfect person to try it. I'd like to see Glass (laughs) respond to the accent. (laughs) I wonder if it would work. (laughs) <laughs> ah, let's try that. All right. Let's try that, Jason. I can do a southern accent. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I, I would be totally down to see how that how that okay. responds. I mean, I, I, I would <laughs> offer to do it, but I just sound like Foghorn Leghorn. Right. <laughs> I say, I say, I say. <laughs> Glass, take a photo. <laughs> no, I'm shutting down. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I don't play that game. I was going to make the South Will Rise Again joke, but I, I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a quick break. We actually want to thank a new sponsor of the show. We are super thrilled to have iFixit on board for this episode. Uh, this episode of All About Android. iFixit, as many of you know, we're you know we're in the tech industry. We're we're tech fanatics, and uh, iFixit just has a great name on the internet for providing just excellent resources. They have probably. They're best known for their teardowns. They do teardowns of devices and kind of take them apart and show you all the components inside. But it's also an online community, and they have over 10,000 repair guides for everything for your smartphone, computer, tablet, your game console, um, all the way down to your home appliances and even your bike. They they basically, you know, give you the, the details, give you the dirt on how to take apart your stuff and fix it yourself. It's kind of what they're all about. It's like having a free online repair manual for everything. If you've shattered your Galaxy screen, I haven't yet, but if I do, I feel a little bit better about the possibility of repairing it myself. Um, If you need to repair your laptop, swap the battery on your Nexus 7, iFixit has got you covered. Uh, They can even hook you up with the parts you'll need to do it. And everything they sell is tested and guaranteed. iFixit also makes the most trusted repair tools for consumer electronics. And that's what this is all about. This is the Pro Tool or Pro Tech Toolkit. See right here, it's in the box. And right on the outside, you just see the number of uh, different Whoa. tools on the inside. Check this out. This is sweet. Uh, this, this is, is sweet. like a must-have for any Yeah, this is, this is yeah. like, here, I'll put it on the side yeah. camera here. This is a pack that contains all the tools that you're going to need to take your devices apart and fix it yourself. Very durable right? canvas. Super durable. A uh, nice, you know, nice long Velcro strip in there. I mean, you you seriously, you have everything you need in here. You've got spudgers, which I just like the name spudger, but ways to kind of separate the uh, the screen of your of your ah. device away from the plastic without kind of chipping into it. If you do it with a metal tool, 
yeah. you're going to start chipping away the plastic and everything. Um, so it just has a number of tools for doing that. These are great. There's this nifty little thing here. Oh, so yeah. you can extract an extractor, right? It feels kind of like an alien tool, but I love it uh, entirely. Uh, this is pretty neat. Uh, static, so you can protect oh. your device from static electricity. And then this, which may just look like a suction cup, but the beauty of this is if you're taking your screen off here, I'll deactivate my screen. Cool. Very cool. You got it. And then, you know, you've, you've got the tools and this that is, is how clever. you kind of lift it off so you don't have to kind of get in there with your fingers and, uh, and do all that. Not to mention, this is a 54-bit driver kit. And this is actually really cool because oh, you've got wow. all the different types. You've got the Penelope, uh, the, the uh, Phillips, JIS, Torx. Hex, Torx, square, geez. triangle, tri-wing. Yeah. You've got all the different connectors in here, right? Or the different uh, different types uh, to all fit. All in one place, too. Yeah. All in one place, yeah. yeah. It's all just kind of packed really well, uh, really convenient and cohesive. Uh, it's just a great kit, and it packs up really small into a nice just kit. throw it into your bag, take it to work, take it, it to wherever you need to take it to your parents' house to fix their thing. Yeah, you're probably going to be taking yeah. this to your parents' house to fix yeah. their stuff. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Uh, that's, Whether that's they really want to point. or not. <laughs> so repair is noble. E-waste is actually a huge problem. Why would you pay somebody else an arm and leg to fix it when you can actually do it yourself? So you can be part of the solution and repair your own electronics. And go on ifixit.com and check out their their uh, you know their, their breakdowns, their how-tos on how to take these devices apart. They not only give you the tools to do it, they give you the information you need to do it the right way. Uh, so here's what you can do. With iFixit, you can fix it yourself. Visit ifixit.com slash twit for free step-by-step -step guides. iFixit also sells every part and tool that you'll need. Plus, if you enter the code AAA at checkout, you'll save $10 off of any purchase of $50 or more. That's ifixit.com slash twit. And we do thank iFixit so much for their support of all that Android and the Twit Network, it seems like a perfect fit to me. So yeah. it's good having you guys on board. All right. All right. Speaking of hardware, hardware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? That was the best segue yeah? ever. That was really right. in the pantheon of segues. Tom would Tom would be proud. All right, good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so you can set your you can set your watch by it. Uh, the holiday season is approaching, and that means that in the fall we get a lot of consumer product announcements, including uh, this time Amazon checks in with a new line of Kindles. Um, for those who are, you know, you're looking to buy a tablet for your uh, loved one who likes to read or watch video or whatnot. Um, now the hardware is, I mean, it's all right. You know, they've announced they announced two models: a seven inch and an eight point nine inch um, with two gigahertz quad core Snapdragon eight uh, eight hundred CPUs. Um, the seven inch uh, sells for two twenty nine with sixteen gigabyte of storage and Wi Fi, or three twenty nine if you add LTE. And the eight point nine inch sells for three seventy nine with Wi Fi or four seventy nine over LTE. But what's interesting is what they've added in terms of what the Kindle now offers. So they um, launch these new devices with a new reading mode that extends battery while reading. So it gives you a, a, a better battery life for you know you can get more out of your device. For what you use a, a Kindle for a exactly lot of the time, mainly right? for it. Um, they've updated their operating system to the new operating system called Fire OS, which has got a lot more enterprise features and allows for secure browsing and email. So those of you who want to bring your tablet to work or utilize your work email on it and your IT guy hates you for it, now it, hopefully that will bridge that gap, which is always a key yeah. moment in any... Keep your IT any, guys happy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but what's interesting is that um, they Amazon focuses a lot on customer service, and I can attest to this because I work with them on a daily basis. Um, and so they have added in an app that is totally free to use that's part of the OS called Mayday, which is a 24-7 customer, customer support solution that it provides a picture-in-picture -picture, uh, with someone who can help you at Amazon. Wow. Um, now, like for those of you... Amy. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> so for those of you who are worried about, um, about privacy or anything like that, you can mute your side so they can't hear what you're saying or you can block them from seeing your screen if you want or seeing you or whatnot. Um, they've built in all these parameters to make people feel safe about it. But we were just talking a couple episodes ago. Someone's like, hey, I've got a tablet and my parents are having a hard, my parents yeah. have a tablet, they have a hard time with it. This is exactly that solution. They can just go to Amazon and someone at Amazon will be there who can help them. Totally. Yeah. So you can feel a little bit more confident about, you know, buying this for somebody who's maybe a little bit less tax, tech savvy, which is actually part, you know, perfect yep. for an Amazon solution of something like this. We're, we're always talking about 
on this show about oh, the Kindle. You know, it's good for some people. It's not good for me. Yeah. And power users, you know, aren't going to like the the yes. things. But you know, we're not necessarily the target. We are not at all. The people that would right. use a customer service overlay, you know, picture in picture thing like this. Yeah are absolutely the target, and that's going to be a pretty cool feature. Now, I can only hope that there are going to be some wonderful screen cap videos of people having fun with uh, Amazon customer support people. <laughs> Just think of the potential oh of this. Right. <laughs> I don't want to know what people will do. <laughs> I'm already feeling bad for the customer service reps. I Sorry, know. guys. Can you imagine yeah. that? I mean, someone's just sitting there up in in Seattle just waiting for somebody to have a problem with their Kindle. I mean, like, I yeah. wonder what the usage on this is going to be. I bet that's a full-time job right there. To be. And it's 24-7, so yeah. yeah. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So, well, this will be great. I, I really like these new Kindles. I think they're very pretty, but they're definitely based for a consumer market. People mm -hmm. that, you know, have Amazon Prime or are going to use mm -hmm. this 24-7. People that want to use it as a e-reader as well and you know watch the amazon prime videos on it yep. all the time it's nice and thin it's really pretty yep. um the big one is it, pretty pricey though and that's going to be a drawback for a lot of people it's expensive yeah it's a i mean what was it 379 with the yeah. wi-fi version yeah so but the thing is is that for those people who live and breathe in that amazon prime environment mm -hmm. yeah it's, like it's a perfect fit for them it's still so, you know 8.9 yeah. inch uh yeah. for 379 is still less expensive than the iPad or, yep. you know, mm -hmm. a lot of, a lot of, uh, 10.1 inch Android tablets like True. the, you know, that are coming in around $500. So it's still less expensive. Um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Amazon's all about kind of customer service. This, this kind of speaks to that. And what I think is interesting is that That's there's only so much you can do with the hardware. It's a tablet. We know, you know, like they're going to yeah. put the best technology well, yes, they can exactly. put into it. So, right. okay, so how can Amazon differentiate itself? Well, Apple doesn't provide 24-7 video picture-in-picture -picture service, you know, mm -hmm. like so it becomes a selling point. Whether, you know, the, 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 the enterprise features, one thing I didn't talk about is they added – uh, visual UI, like stickers and stuff like that. You can put on <laughs> photos, all that stuff, you know, like people love that stuff. Like the, you know, as much as I, it's a horrible term, but the normal people love that. And so, you know, so it's like <laughs> some of the, fe some of the features that, that I just see, you know, whatever, I don't need these stickers, you know, like I don't, I don't want to yeah. add funny things to my photos. There are millions of people who do that every day, you know? Yeah. So um, it, it, it's interesting to see Amazon taking the customer service approach and differentiating with software versus trying to uh, outpace hardware. Mm -hmm. I feel like I need to revisit the, the Kindle, um, the Kindle Fire. I, you know, I got the the original yeah. when yeah. it came out, and that was brick. never really that that uh. impressed by it. I mean, it was interesting for for a little while, but ultimately just felt really held back. And they've iterated pretty well on that over the last couple of years. So yeah, if we get, if I'll we try get to get you in, one in for a review. I can I can I can, <laughs> I, can update, I can update my history with Amazon Kindle and not feel like yes. I'm just talking, you know, talking on knee-jerk reaction from two years ago, you know? <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, I guess we'll see uh, if there's a review on Before You Buy sometime soon of the Kindle HDX. Uh, and another device that I'm sure will eventually get reviewed on Before You Buy and on this show, once it's actually officially announced, <laughs> is the uh, Next Nexus. Everybody's calling it the Nexus 5. We still don't know if it's called the Nexus 5. Uh, but... We have a few more leaks, and we might. And it was a slow news week, so we might as well talk about it. <laughs> so them, many right? leaks. So first of all, new pictures. Yay! It looks about the same as the <laughs> other pictures that we've seen. So there we go. But it's really close up and very sharp. And there you go. Uh, but also a log that supposedly details the specs and offerings likely has wireless charging. That's good. You say you use wireless charging in your Nexus Four, right? I do. Yes. Man, I want that. I want to buy it. I wanted to get it when I got the Nexus Four, and I just forgot. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's one of those things that when you start using it, right, you The only tell reason us. I bought it is because Tony had an extra, and he oh. was like, you want this? And I was like, sure, here's some money. And? I like it. Can, yeah. like, can, you, yeah. can you imagine your life without it? Yes, I can. Uh, so yeah, it's not, I okay. only have yeah. one, so I use my wireless one here, and then yeah. I use my regular charger at home. Yeah. So I trade back and forth depending on when I need to charge yeah, it. Yeah, I'm torn. And I remember Gina really wanted me to get it, and I was like, yeah, hey, I'll get it. I just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, Did they lower that. the price on that? Yeah, really. They should. They should, they should make it cheaper. They made it cheaper. I'll buy it right now. All right, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Miracast support <laughs> for uh, zapping, you know, your screen, uh, your your device up onto a bigger screen if there's support on the other end as well. More hints at the ability to theme the operating system in the notification bar. We've kind of been hearing a little bit about this and some of the screenshots that we've seen. So it's seeming more and more likely that KitKat is going to have some sort of theming capability. Mm -hmm. uh, I would not the, be surprised by that at all. Either yeah. the colors are coming from the apps that you're running or, or there's something that you can actually set uh, so that things like the notification bar actually reflects whatever color it is you want. 
Uh, curious to see if that ends up being the case and if so, how it's implemented. And then I, I won't go through the previously leaked specs because we've already kind of touched on those, but there we have it. We do have a date that is pot potentially October 14th. That would be 14 slash 13 days from now, depending on what part of the first you are in, where you are. Uh, <laughs> and so we don't have very much longer, if this is to be believed, to uh, to find out something official. Something official. Which means Anything. likely everything that we already know. <laughs> that seems to be I the... I would be great if it swerved. Away. I would I know, love to right? see it swerve. But yeah, You'd love mean, to yeah. be surprised. Yeah, that's the one thing I've learned about people. They can't keep their mouth shut. So <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. Uh, the charging orb is $60 still. And I just don't feel it's like $60 it worth. Anyway, yeah, it's yeah. totally not. Yeah. That yeah, was like thirty nine ninety nine. It's a convenience. Yeah. It's yeah. definitely a convenience, but $60. Yeah, it's, yeah, so it's got to be it's like... It's got to be like... I can't live without this. Yeah. Uh, for for yeah, peripheral is sixty bucks. Yeah. Um, do you have Chromecast? I do. Yeah. Do you use it a lot? Eh. See, yeah. the problem is I I already have Netflix on a Roku That's at home. The big problem for a lot of people. So I think. and right now the only thing you can really use it for is YouTube and Netflix. Yeah. yeah and then play. Why and play store I actually stuff. bought it is because I never purchased Hulu Plus. I well I had it in the past and I don't necessarily like Hulu Plus, so mm -hmm. I really wanted to be able to Chromecast Hulu videos to my l big screen TV instead of having to use my uh, home theater PC. Yeah. Because it would be easier. Yeah, you should be able to do that. But whenever I try to screen Chromecast things up to my big screen TV from Hulu, the resolution is horrid. I mean, it just shows you the browser, basically, and it, oh, it I see. looks so you're like doing it from your laptop, connection. from yeah. the Chrome browser, I yeah. see, and casting it up bad. there. It's bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's not ideal. Mm. Um, well, Andrew Stone writes in about Chromecast. Says, so what is going on with Chromecast? Pocket Cast states they are ready, but Google is not approving it. Yeah. Plex is still not available. I see no support approved for it other than the initial apps that shipped with it. Uh, what is going on? Did I waste my money on another failed streaming product from Google? An I don't think another, you your money. Another failed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I take that, you know. But, but. I, I think... It's pretty darn inexpensive, regardless mm -hmm. of you know it was a how you slice it. Although yeah. everybody's you know reality is different, and thirty some odd dollars might still be you know a good chunk of change depending on who you are and your situation. But ultimately, it's pretty inexpensive when it comes to neat technology that yes. Google's pushing out. Um, they are taking their sweet time, but I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I think mm -hmm. what they're trying to do is really iron out uh, the SDK and just make sure that it's. That it's flawless. They might also be dealing with some, you know, kind of deals on the back sure, end that yeah. they have to that they have to work out. But uh, Read Write Web actually asked the same question. They have a, a pretty good write up about it. And you know, Google just isn't ready for the software developer kit mm -hmm. to go live for mass adoption yet. Um, they had a little bit of. I remember a couple of months ago there was what was it all cast or something? Yeah, it was. I figured the, out a way yep. around it. And then Google pushed out an update and that broke it. No one really knew if that was like intentional or if it was just swept up in, in that update, which is probably the case because uh, all cast was building it based on kind of reverse engineering what was out there and not anything official. So uh, Google doesn't want to drop the ball. It's, you know, Google TV has not been a runaway success and they don't want that again. You see, but here's the thing. Then don't release it. Yeah. Like, yeah. don't release well, it until you're ready to put everything behind it. I mean, like, it's it, not the Google way. <laughs> well, no, no, no. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't think it's got, you're right. That's not the Google way, but it's also not the media device way for Google or for Apple because you can almost say the exact same thing has happened on Apple on the Apple TV side. Mm -hmm. How many, how many times did we hear Steve Jobs and then everyone else after Steve Jobs say the Apple TV is a hobbyist device and it's not a real, they didn't put their all behind it. We as Uber, you know, connected media nerds see the potential of a box that can bring uh, internet video onto your TV and all that kind of the great stuff. And for some reason, these companies just, whether it's the media entanglements and the contracts and stuff like that, but they just can't get it right. They can't get it all the way done. This is Google's doing the exact same thing with Chromecast that they did with Google TV, where they're rolling something out saying, oh, this is going to be great. And then just running the opposite direction. Kind of, yeah, they do kind of just I do hope that. that doesn't yes. happen because then I'll never use the thing. I really oh, yeah. want to use it for Hulu. That's See, all I, I use want. it all the time. <laughs> we, we use it all the time. Do you house. use do it you for really? YouTube, yes. Netflix, everything? Um, Netflix and YouTube. Okay, yes. yeah. And See, I, you know, but but you have, but did you have a device for uh, for Netflix before this? Yes, the but PlayStation not for 3. But not for YouTube. Uh, 
I think you could do YouTube on PlayStation 3, but it wasn't that awesome, so I right. never did. And so now this one is awesome, and so it's, it's the Yeah, solution. because I, it's like my phone is my remote. It's awesome. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Yeah. I love it. I wish that there were more things that I could fling up there because then I would use well, the yeah, PlayStation 3 less. I wish that I could take the media that's on my Mac and you know, cast it over, and then the, I would not need Except, to use the PlayStation anymore. I'm so I'm completely sold on controlling all of this for my device. Right, I, yeah. The more I do it, the more I love it. You could do all that with a Google TV. I mean, like they did it. Yeah, they did it. It's just that they're not putting to put a consumer product in market and have good support. You need mm -hmm. to get really behind it, and it's clear that they're like, eh, they're not too sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and the and the great thing for us is like thirty five bucks was a flyer, and yeah, I'll take a risk on it. I mean, we were talking before the show. I got one. I brought it with me on a trip with the intention to use it in the hotel, and I never took it out of my bag. Yeah. It's still sitting on my desk. Like I don't, you know, like I just haven't used it. Um, the killer app is in there. Whether or not it's because they're holding up the SDK or they haven't, you know, like if Plex added, that would be interesting. If yeah, Podcast that added, be. that'd be really interesting. Um, but it's clear that it's not, you know, they just put it out there to see how it would do, and then we'll see from there. But I it mean, has also only been two months. True, true. Like two months isn't that long, yeah. but it does kind of go into that weird gray area that Google does regularly where they release something like Hangouts, yep. right? And, oh, my God, it's the biggest thing. Oh, everybody's <laughs> been waiting for something like this. Hangouts is so great. And then it's like radio silence for months. Yeah. And you're like, okay, well, but you rolled it out and it didn't do all the things right out of the gate. And it, it, like you said, they, they, yeah. they put it on the table and then they walk away for a while. And you're like, wait a minute. It seemed like a big deal. Yeah. And now it doesn't seem like such a big deal. But you say that it is. Show me the money. It's very inconsistent. It's very inconsistent. <laughs> Do you yeah. feel like we're really selfish and impatient as consumers and we just, we want everything now and we can't be happy without it? Well, and no, no, I think, I think, from. I don't think we're selfish and patient as consumers. I think we're selfish and impatient as being the, the tech people we are. We yeah, have a sure. higher, we have a higher expectation. Mm -hmm. I don't think I could successfully bring a Chromecast home and explain it to my mother. <laughs> well, and that's the, that's the consequence of it. Yeah. yeah right. So we, we're sensitive to it yeah. because of what we do for a living. Mm -hmm. But the, the, you know, bringing it home to your mother, she Man. she wouldn't think of that initially, right? Yeah. Like she probably wouldn't have all of that experience and that time to think about it and pick Man. it apart and say, "This is why I don't like it." She just go, "It doesn't do what it should do. Right. Why doesn't it?" Exactly. Yeah. And then it's dead in the water. And, it's and like, why is she going to use it? And that's the thing is like when we get behind something, we evangelize like crazy. I mean, I can't. I I, I should call Google and get some sort of affiliate check for the number of Google TVs <laughs> I've sold in the past three years. Because like, I I've talked people into buying it because I was like, oh, this is great. This is going to be the future of it. And then it makes me look stupid because it's it, they didn't see it all the way through. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you look at what Amazon's doing with the Kindles. They're making products for my mother, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're behind right. it. And they're right. totally behind it. That's mm -hmm. true. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. I don't know. Hmm. There you go. Anyway, uh, interesting stuff. Let's thank our another sponsor. We uh, thank one of our fa one of my favorite sponsors of the Twit Network. Uh, we want to thank Ting for sponsoring this episode of All About Android. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Ting is yet, Ting is a no BS mobile service. Basically, they're an MVNO uh, reseller of cell service across the nationwide Sprint network. So you know it's got a good uh, network backbone behind it. But what makes it different is that they've got a whole slew of services that make your mobile uh, customer experience that much better. They're truly and completely con contract free. They've got no early termination fees or any other BS. And for those of you who, do, who have been hit with early termination fees, they have a new early termination fee relief program. So if you're paying an early termination fee to come to Ting and use their service, they've got your back. They'll give you a credit for 25% of your early termination fee, up to 75% devi per device. Simply purchase your device through Ting, port your number, then submit your final bill with your early termination fee detailed from your previous carrier. You can go to ting.com slash ETF for more information on this great new service. In addition to that, they've got no bundling or ride-along services. You can choose from the extra small through extra, extra large service levels for voice minutes, text messages, and megabytes of data, all billed separately. There are no overage, overage charges or penalties. If you use more than you thought you would, you just pay for what you used. It's that simple. No add-on charges at all. So if you're using voicemail, caller ID, tethering, hotspot, three-way calling, call, call forwarding, and all the other features, they're all part of the service. There are no add-on charges. And that way you get no mysterious line items on your bill. Ting charges you for what you use, plus whatever taxes they're legally required to collect. No hidden charges, recovery fees, or any other BS. And what's great is you can have unlimited devices on one plan. Have as many devices as you want on one shared, pooling minutes, messages, and megabytes. Each device on a plan costs a flat $6 per month. You get a powerful online account control panel where you can take control of your account, see your usage and your bills, and, um, all from this powerful online control panel. And if you need some help, they've got no-hold customer support. You can call them anytime at 1-855-TING-FTW. 
anytime between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and a real person will pick up the phone. And if you, it's outside of those times or you just don't want to talk to somebody, they have amazing online support at help.ting.com. They've got customer forums, a simple and powerful help ticketing system, video tutorials, video startup guides, and so much more. So here's the deal. You want to get on Ting? This is how you do it. Purchase your mobile device from Ting, which you'll get in two to five business days after you order it. Then activate your device with Ting, and you have the option to select a new phone number or port an existing one. Ting will break out your rates by minutes, text messages, and megabytes, and bill you at the end of the month for whatever you've used. So if this sounds interesting, and I, it's got to sound interesting, you get control over your mobile phone bill, go to allaboutandroid.ting.com, where you can start saving money and better manage your mobile phone usage. And check out their savings calculator, and you can see how much, how much you can save yourself or your company if you're buying devices for, uh, for uh, your employees and other folks. So what's even great, since you're an All About Android viewer and we want to take care of you, and so does Ting, you can save up to $25 on your first Ting device when you sign up. So go to allaboutandroid.ting.com and start saving today. And thanks, Ting, for your support. Thank you, Ting. You're awesome. They Duh. Are. Everybody <laughs> knows that. Uh, no, seriously, thank you. You guys are great. It's uh, always great seeing you uh, every week, week after week, on All About Android. Uh, before we move on to the Mega App Palooza, Real quick, Chad, you reviewed the LG G2 on Before You Buy earlier today. I did. So, and Shannon happens to have it right there. So, I do so have she it. can show it off a little bit. Um, uh, so, I can do a, sort of a mini review right now. First, uh, LG G2 is the flagship phone that uh, LG is touting. Oh, look at that nice tutorial. Don't you always want to see tutorials when you unlock <laughs> your phone? You might think that you'd want to get it at the phone, but no, you want to see a tutorial. I know you do. Um, tutorial so, hater. This is a snarky review. Yeah, I like no, it. I'm, I'm, already, I'm three seconds in, and I'm already like uh, a little bit upset. He's warmed up from earlier From before today. you buy, yeah. You buy. So let's first cover hardware. Great-looking screen. It's a 1080 um, uh, big, a big screen, uh, over 400 PPI, uh, LCD, yeah, nice. uh, 5.2 inches. Uh, let's talk about cameras. It has a 13-megapixel snapper on the back and a 2.2-megapixel uh, snapper on the front. Um, the, let's talk about uh, controls. On the back of the phone, you have a volume up and volume down and a uh, your power sleep wake, which is located in the direct middle of the back of the phone, which is an okay place to put it, but it's really not the best place like they're touting. I still prefer something on the side of the phone because you do a lot of really weird hand gestures when you're trying to work with this phone, I, I kept putting my thumb in the middle of the phone to, to give myself enough leverage to actually push it. Um, and it's not, I, I don't feel like it's any better of a location for, for a, lock, a lock switch. Um, what else on hardware? It has all the things, oh look, another tutorial. Oh, isn't, that, isn't that great? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Well, you um, obviously don't know what you're doing with this yeah. device. No, no, not at all. Um, uh, it has all the things that you'd expect, gyroscope, accelerometer, um, Wi-Fi all the way up to AC, um, uh, proximity sensor. Um, at the bottom, you have uh, speakers and a microphone, headphone jack, uh, all of that stuff. I, don't, I think that's just about it on, in terms of hardware. No removable battery. There's a 3,000 milliamp hour battery in there, which I found really, really good. In fact, that got me uh, very, very long. Oh, another tutorial. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that great? This is driving me crazy. Can you yeah. turn those off? Like, why uh, does it keep you, doing uh, So here's the thing yeah. is there's no... Oh, I, well, look at that panel. <laughs> yes. Okay, so, wait. <laughs> Time to talk about Boom. software. We were talking about hardware up to this point. Amazing. <laughs> Let's talk about software for a little bit. Zorro Running Android 2.2. Uh, Android 4.4. Oh, 4, 4, 4, sorry. 4.2.2. Um, uh, and you can see that they have skinned the crap out of this phone. This is your notification pull down. This is stock. I, ju I just, uh, uh, Shannon, I, I handed this back to Shannon so that she could give it back uh, to the people who we reviewed it from. So I, I deleted all of my modifications. Um, this is what you get stock. Over 60% over of that screen is taken up with LG's crapware that they've put in the notification bar. But it's useful, Chad. No, it's not. Oh. No, it's not. So... On top, the the first row is things like uh, is things like airplane mode, um, your sound, uh, that sort of stuff. And and Shen's going through it right now. The next row is Q slide apps. These are 
uh, dedicated apps that can be uh, put in a hover mode. So go ahead and oh, click okay. any of those, Shannon. Uh, calculator would be good. There you go. So this is an app. Oh, another tutorial! Isn't that great? Um, uh, this is an app that you would like sit over something else. Uh, you even have an opacity slider. So if you wanted to to have, if you were trying to figure out something, that maybe like while in a text message, um, you could you could set the opacity lower. I, I had big problems with with the touch screen. Oh, another tutorial. Isn't that great? Um, Where'd my uh, app go? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's kludgy. It's weird. Uh, it's like especially like if you're sending a text message, you can send one text message. And then once you hit send, the app goes away. It's not a fully baked app. It, it, it's like, so if I was like in, an a, in a game and I wanted that over on the side and then playing the game, at really low opacity, get a text message, bring it back up, not leave the game, answer the thing and hit send, it goes away. I'd like it to stay there. If every single soft, another, you're at another tutorial, I just wanted to point out. <laughs> Um, uh, every single software piece that... El another tutorial. Another tutorial. And this is not scripted, guys. Now, now, to be fair, it's the first time that you're running it, essentially, right? You wiped the device, yes, so it's, you're yes. starting from square one. Listen, they want to be very clear yeah. as to how to use this phone. It's <laughs> uh, all right, okay. so, so okay. ultimately... Buy, right? <laughs> I ended up giving this actually a do not buy. The hardware of this phone is ridiculously amazing. The software on this phone is absolutely atrocious. Um, uh, if you are someone who wants to spend, I literally spent hours trying to modify um, using apps or whatever to get this back to something that was usable. Also, yeah. uh, 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 if you could uh, click any into anything with the keyboard, uh, Shannon. Uh, oh, I hear it. Go, go to. I'm busy. Okay. She, she's turning off stuff, which, which she's showing that you can Let's turn see. off all of the apps that were in the thing, and and it's on. still there. If you go to messaging. Oh, oh another tutorial. That's a tutorial on top oh, of a tutorial. Wait. I just want to find out. Okay. Here's a tutorial on how to use the tutorial. Look yeah. at that. Just look at that that keyboard. It's so bad. Every single piece of software that LG added onto this phone is maybe the worst Android software I've ever used. Hmm. Um, and so I ended up giving it a don't buy because there are other flagship phones in the market that I would suggest way above this phone. Head on over to the, the play.google.com um, and, and go to the devices section and buy any of those devices <laughs> and you will be way happier than this Oh, phone. So, Chad, would you say that life is not good? I would say, yeah, life is pretty crappy with LG's software. Right. Wow. So, That's life like... is good if you feel like jailbreaking it, right. and hacking it. And so, if you're the, you know, there's a there's a person that I would recommend this to. If you're fine with rooting and roaming, this device has really good hardware. It even has optical image stabilization on the on the camera. It's it's really good hardware. It's it's thin. It's five ounces. It's and it's so it's light. Um, it's very good hardware. Uh, so far, I've, I've been checking the XDA uh, developers forums, and I, I've only seen one ROM, and it's by, like, Scott's ROMs, and it has, like, super chrome font, and just scares me. It, uh, it does <laughs> not look like a ROM that I'd ever want to put on a phone. Um, go, ahead, so, go ahead and take my over-the-shoulder shot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think you need to see this, Chad. Another, another. I, what is this I, one? No, turn the the on. In the t in the tutorial's defense, there is a very large, another bold thing that says, oh, yeah. "Don't show, show this again." Unless yeah, if the you, tutorial is so long that you have to scroll clicking. down to see it. Oh, really? I probably mm -hmm. missed a couple, but yeah. yeah there you go. Um, all right. Cool. So, and then for Nexus fans, it's it's sounding like uh, to a large degree that the next Nexus is kind of based on the G2. Which I'd be... Which would kind of standpoint. address... Yeah, the hardware, yeah. which yes. would kind of address your, your problems, right? Yes. I mean, it's a quad-core processor with the latest GPU in there. It's really fast. It is super fast on on uh, benchmarks and on gaming, on actual performance. Um uh, it, it also it, it, so there's extra software like you could do a three finger swipe to get to push apps into another location. Uh, you can do a double tap uh, to sleep and wake the phone. So double tap and then it wakes oh, up. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah, and that's neat. and that's kind of neat. I, I did find that 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 touch input for some reason seems buggy on this phone, and I bet that they will update that. Um, sometimes uh, I tried to double tap and it wouldn't work. There's there some weirdness. Um, 
but yeah, that's uh, that's about that's my hey, review. Hey Chad, I yeah. don't know, I don't know if it's because I have monstrously lar larger hands than you have, but I love the button on the back. Yeah, yeah I well, don't like the button, and I oh, have smaller perfect. hands than you do. Yeah, this is perfect. I originally liked it, but then it. Uh, the thing is, is there, it's no big advantage. It's not like a huge selling point. I, I wouldn't. I don't. I can't imagine a use case where someone needs the button so bad that they have to buy this phone. Maybe, maybe they spell that out in the tutorial. Maybe. Maybe if I would have read the tutorials. Yeah. Um, Just saying. <laughs> Angry uh, Chad. I like it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that is. I, it, you have to admit the design is actually pretty nice. Like, and, and the it's screen so is pretty. really, really. The hardware designers yeah. at LG won a hundred percent. Software designers at LG wow. may have been I hope not, mentally I hope, handicapped. I hope, wow. I hope none of them are watching or listening. I don't I'm care. Kidding. If you are, please write in and and, 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 and rebuke and my. Rebuke Chad's uh, review. Yes. In the meantime, let's get into the uh, major part of this episode the apps. The apps. All righty. So uh, the app section this week is going to be completely dominated by Google, who yeah, went and updated they, everything. They went on a tear. <laughs> if you, if oh, you, that's what they've been doing. Yeah, no exactly. Yeah, no Chromecast. Yes. They've just been updating <laughs> everything on Android. Um, if you are an Android user and you're probably using a lot of these Google apps, you've probably already seen some of these changes or anticipating them, and we'll just dive right into the first one. Uh, the Gmail update, uh, version 4.6, uh, is, is, uh, is here. And it's basically uh, continuing the the global redesign of all Google kind of applications. Um, they've got an improved conversation view, um, better options to multi-select messages, and a cleaner design using you love them the cards. Yeah, those cards. Card, are, those cards are there now. They're in Gmail. Yeah, and you see them pretty regularly when you go into your mail. And yep, you do. You see into yep. like a particular message. Yep. Wait, I, I'm fine. I love. I I love. I'm so. I'm so all about the cards stuff, and we're gonna get more into the cards uh, design. Um, but I think these are great updates. Um, what's interesting though is uh, the APK teardown happened over on Android Police. Um, Artem Rusavsky uh, did the did the APK teardown. There wasn't much that came out of it by looking through it. Some minor changes here and there, but the big thing was ads. Uh, there's some code in there that specifies that ads are coming to Gmail. Um, we don't know exactly how they'll be implemented, but we we've, we've already got them on the web, and so I guess it's just a couple of uh, took a couple of years for them to work its way into the into the app itself. So the ad free environment might be coming to an end. Um, interestingly enough, in the rundown here, you put ads in all caps, and I thought it was ADS, and I was like, what is ADS? Oh. I'm like, what does ADS mean? Is that like some sort of disability services or something like that? And I was like, oh right, ads. Okay, so <laughs> ads, advertisements. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that hits and if so what kind of a pushback react slash reaction it's going to get right, inevitably because it's different right but you said that but everybody said that when gmail came out and now do you care i but, love gmail but right. i don't want ads on my phone it depends on gmail. how it's, it depends on how it's implemented because yeah. you're talking about a much smaller screen real estate sure. with a yeah. phone so just throwing an ad on the screen actually takes up a large percentage of your usable mm -hmm. space yeah ron if that yeah <laughs> That gets in the way. Well, if we if know. we think if we think about the mobile units that Google's already selling through their ad networks, I think we could probably guess how it's going to look. It's going to be a couple of lines at the bottom, you know. See, like but that's that. just good. I mean, doesn't that just scream? You know, people are oh, they don't like that on on their mobile apps, right? No, I agree. The, no, the, no. the free there's the free and there's the paid apps, and the free apps commonly have the little uh, AdSense ads down at the bottom or in the top or whatever. I personally don't. I, I just unsee them. I, I block them from my vision. But people really get bent out of shape. And if Google is doing that on their premier, like pro probably their their top, their most top tier app of Gmail, like that's kind of significant. I, I don't know. But that's their that's their business model. It's been their business model for a decade, for more than a decade. I'm, I'm just surprised it took this long. Yeah, You're such I mean, a devil's advocate. I am. I'm a, I'm a contrarian. <laughs> Sorry. Be okay with ads. It's okay. <laughs> eh, what are you going to do? Eric Duckman in the chat room asks, can I get Gmail Pro for 99 cents? You see, now that, but, <laughs> I mean, but that's, that, that it would be very interesting they offer that option, you know? Like, I uh, don't you know? see them offering I don't, think they, I don't think they will because the, the revenue uh, generated this, from not offering yeah, exactly. that is pretty high. <laughs> So totally, totally, we'll see. We'll see how they implement. I let's hope that this improved uh, approach to design yields an elegant solution. 
Yes, that's that. what I hope. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not adverse to them bringing ads in. I realize that's how they make money and everything. But if it's done like that, like what you're yeah. saying, where it's just put down at the bottom, I think it's going to really offend a lot yeah. of people. Um, offend them. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe that was the wrong word. You know what I mean. I know. Hangouts. Uh, so finally, a pretty pretty awesome update to Hangouts. Actually, finally. one of the things that went away when the switch happened from Talk to to Hangouts was an indicator to show who's online on mobile. Now you can see that there's a little green dot next to all of your contacts that are online, which is very useful. Uh, contacts are now organized by people you hang out with, suggested people, and then other contacts. So it kind of does a more smart, a, a smarter kind of sorting of the people that you might actually uh, start chats with. Uh, long press contacts in the new hangout screen and you'll hide the contact just so you know and invites are now above your conversations so they're easy to find and then pinching to zoom the photos that are in hangouts which is actually pretty cool as well I'm happy they implemented that uh apk teardown code reveals survey says <laughs> ding. uh rich statuses are coming back as well so this is with with talk you could put in your own kind of away message right or your own status message it looks like it might actually be coming back so you know you might have ron is ignoring you right now or jason is about to throw his phone out the window buy a new one uh so there you go might update based on activity google you know in android is is kind of pushing more and more for this kind of uh sense uh, this awareness of what the activity is so maybe it can update around that and set your mood uh it can become your mood ring Yay! Yeah. Any of these excite you? Yeah. Not really. Okay. <laughs> Do you use Hangouts? Um, very rarely. The most I'll use it is whenever I go to conventions and I need to like have a meeting with somebody who's here in the office. Mm -hmm. um, then I'll use Hangouts because it's a lot easier to you know chat with them when you're face to face. But otherwise, I really don't use it on a day to day basis. Yeah. So I'll notice the updates, but it's it's not going to be a big deal for me. Yeah. What I, about you? I use it. Yes, I use it regularly with with my on wife on the regular. For, yeah, pretty much with your wife. Mm -hmm. with, she's with, she's about the only one that I chat with on Hangouts. Aww. Well, and then well, and then Twit. You know, it all kind of passes through mm -hmm. that app if there's chats yeah. happening here. But I don't use it at all. Oh, there you go. So I should use it. It's, it's like those things. I can't tell you. There's so much lamenting in my Google app usage. Like th uh, this morning again, I was waiting for the Bart trade. I'm like, I should use Google Plus more. I opened it up, the app, and I was like, oh, that's nice. That's pretty, whatever. And then I haven't posted to it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a rough life. Anyway, yeah. um, so moving on, the update, uh, the update train. Uh, Google also updated the uh, search application, uh, version 2.8.2.8.7. Um, had some minor updates, but pretty uh, significant stuff. They've uh, added automatic language pack updates. So for other languages, um, it allows for automatic downloads of those language packs as you choose them or need them. Um, it's got wider TV recognition, so um, it's uh, the search app is trying to detect whether or not you're actually watching live television or just watching TV, which I think is really interesting when hmm. you're searching something, and how they're doing that is kind of weird. Um, apparently, only live TV broadcasts can be detected, so I guess if you're watching TV, you're sitting on the couch. Because it syncs up with the, the online calendar or, of sorts or, or, or maybe it's using some sort of shazam like listening thing oh, you know okay. like I, oh, right. I really wonder how much in the we can't hear spectrum how much data is being spit out because how does shazam work shazam's got to work you know because they're shazamming commercials and things like that now mm -hmm. it can't be that they're picking up the audio register when you're recording it i think it's emitting some sort of tone that we can't hear that's my that's my thought i need to ask somebody about that there's no in uh, research into that whatsoever what's but, the frequency ron what's the frequency yeah, exactly frequency ron <laughs> so um so in addition to knowing whether you're watching live television or not, they've also did a subtle UI tweak uh, to enable uh, for tablets. So if you're using the Google search application on your tablet, it's going a little wider now. It's using a little more of the real estate. Um, but what's interesting within this search update is not only did they update the application on the Android side of things, they also updated the iOS app. But um, they've also did a tweak to the um, to the to the page rank algorithm and uh, their knowledge graph comparisons. And basically, it's continuing Google's uh, mission to give you better search results based off what you're searching for or what you're looking for. So now you're getting richer answers with comparison filters and sorting. You're getting improved explorations and answers for songs when you're searching for songs. Um, you get a better conversation through the search app itself, and as well as notifications, reminders, and hot wording um, through the search app. Um, which is really kind of interesting. But the changes don't stop there. 
Um, and Wait, it, there's more? There's even more. Um, the update to 2.8.7 changes the hot word uh, to activate the search application to, okay, Google, which I believe is... There we go. Yeah, there it is. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, so now, okay, Google is the new way to, uh, to trigger it, and that only works in English um, for now. So... Um, but what's interesting is that it also enables hot words from search results, which is uh, interesting as well, too. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. so you don't have to go back out to that screen. and Exactly. Okay, Google. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Google. They're all moving in that direction. So, um, Soon all the phones won't even require you to, you know, to, to hit a button, you know. I don't know. I never use the hot word anymore. I never use the hot word. Only either. because it's so slow on this. Yeah. <laughs> what else have they got, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> There's more. Oh yeah, there's... we told you this is fact. <laughs> oh boy, there is more. Yeah, let me see here. Oh, these so these are these are very minor actually. Uh, YouTube, eh, you know, I'm not even gonna really mention it because it's just the little tweaks that don't, don't really matter a whole lot. Although the team is probably yelling at me right now if they're listening, going, "Hey, we did all that work. Shut up." Uh, but Google Voice, hallelujah! They put out an update to Google Voice finally. Man, finally, they do it's the been whole... years. Oh wait a minute, no, they added support for <laughs> SMS short codes. <laughs> So you can finally use your Google Voice number to do things like online banking verification, SMS alerts, yes. and American Idol voting. Oh, so there you go, the important things. Yep. So no MMS. It's cool. It's not going to happen, folks. It's, it's never going to happen. I know. Happen. Why can't it happen? It can go. we get someone on? No, it's not going to talk to us about this. I like know. I want to talk. If someone listen, we know Googlers are watching. I know we know you are because they responded to stuff we've said on Twitter and things like that. So we know <laughs> you're watching or listening. If you work at Google, or if you work anywhere near anyone who works at Google Voice, if you have any knowledge whatsoever of Google Voice, please step forward, be a whistleblower, and let us know why MMS won't work. That's all I want to know. Why won't it? It, were, it goes on. It's on data. One, one would think. I, so, yeah, it's it's perplexing why it can't work. No, it's not perplexing. I think there's just something else going on. You do? Yeah, we just don't have all the information. I'm going to go. Th I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to track this down. Well, we, do, we definitely so don't have all the information. Investigative journalism. Me and Chad are going to go to Mountain View, and I'm going to have the microphone, and I'm going to be like, so. <laughs> Good when luck with that. When they least that. expect yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Watch out. Were you or are you ever, have you ever been a Google Voice user? Yes, I'm currently a Google Voice user. It's really nice because I can put that on my business cards yeah. and hand them out at cons yeah. and people aren't going to, you know, go nuts and call me on my personal number. And when you review devices. You yeah. And I just put my Google Voice in. number on there. Yeah. So I it's wanna, great. I, I want to embrace Google Voice. Google Voice. Right now, all it does is let me let in the UPS guy yeah. from my work That's, because my phone, because you need a local number for your box mm. for the apartment building. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have a local number. So I route Google Voice through it. That's oh, all that I use works. it for. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I use it to make calls and do texts, and yeah. that's it. I used to use it for international calling. I used to use it for the, the mm. super cheap or free oh, international yeah. calling. Yeah. But anyway. Oh, Google Voice. All right. One more thing from Google, which is something that's actually really cool that I stumbled upon by accident, which I didn't even realize they had it. Um, but so Google's been making more uh, and more uh, minor adjustments to Chrome for Android. And recently they rolled out the ability to search by images, which is always pretty cool. Um, but then they also uh, released uh, gestures that are enabled within Chrome. So now, and Chad, I don't know if you can pull up the blog post and show the show the directions, but you can swipe horizontal, horizontally across the top toolbar to switch between tabs. You can drag vertically down from the toolbar to enter into the tab switcher view. Um, and you can drag down the menu, you can drag down from the menu to open the menu and select the item you want with having to lift without having to lift your finger which is very cool app level gestures that are enabled in Chrome. And the other interesting thing I noticed, which has nothing to do with this Chrome update, is that have you noticed that search results now through Chrome on Google come up in card UI? Yeah. Yeah. That they do that UI. on yeah. iOS too. Yeah, yeah. So. Whoa. Cards. Love it. Yay, Love cards. It. There we go. Busy, busy week for Google. That's for sure. Yeah, about the only app that didn't update is Google Play Music. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's speaking, an email. Speaking of which, we have an email from Derek writes in. And says, you rave all the time about Google Play. And while it seems great, those of us in countries like Canada can't get it. I, use I think he's talking about Play Music. Yeah, Play Music, yes. Mm -hmm. Google Play Music. Right. I use Songza, but it's not the same because you can't control the music. I also have a 14-year-old who is frustrated because she has a hard time buying music on Android. She's pushing for an iPhone just so she can get the music. Do you have any alternatives that you can suggest suggest to play so my daughter does not have to go over to the dark side. <laughs> First off, Derek, thank you for being concerned about your daughter going to the dark side. You don't want your daughter using drugs or using iOS. So I, I was going to say <laughs> not the dark side. It's just another side. But anyways, continue, Ron. I went with the allegiance. Hey, listen, if you're going to commit, you got to go all the way. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, drugs and iOS, it's the same thing. 
Um, so I would I make the this is your brain on iOS joke, but I don't think <laughs> I think we're too old for that now. Anyway, um, there are Google Play Music is not the only music destination. In fact, you're we are lucky to have so many choices in music now. I remember five, ten years ago when we didn't have as many choices as we have now. Um, but uh, there are two great services that I actually used before I switched over to Google Play Music, which I believe I actually still pay into because I forgot to cancel my subscriptions. But um, RDO and Spotify are the two kind of leaders in streaming music capabilities. They both have great Android apps. They've got great libraries. They've got desktop support. Um, they're subscription services, so you don't need to buy albums. So your daughter doesn't even need to buy albums. You can just pay the monthly service, and she can add whatever albums they want to the library. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just great apps, and they, they that's your probably your solution there. Um, the more complicated way is to VPN into the U.S. and sign up that way. Um, but I think that's a little more complicated for your daughter. So uh, yeah, yeah I mean. That, I, yeah, I, I saw that and I put that in there just because, yeah, it is another way and people do it. I don't know kind of the the legality of that. Yeah, <laughs> I think there's a license mm. going on there. That, yeah, there? yeah, but... So I'm, anyway, not, I'm not sure we necessarily suggest that you do that. I but think the safe suggestion. You know that it, that solution exists. The safe suggestion is RDO and Spotify. Yeah. That's the same. And, and, and that's a pretty good suggestion. Now, that said, I need to put a disclaimer. I don't know what their libraries are like in Canada. I don't know what their mm, rights YYZ are. YYZ in the chat said Spotify is not in Canada. Uh, well, so there you RDO go. There you go. Yeah. So. That would answer it. Yeah. Mm. So, so that might not be the great solution, but oh. what can you do? Hmm. Well, then that sucks. Canada, oh, you need you need more music. Just VPN. You need much can do music. That. Much more music. Or Canadians got that joke. Um, all right, so, so RDO has a Canada blog. Yeah, so it looks like yeah, RDO's in Canada. RDO. RDO is in Canada. Only in Canada. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. There's their. Yeah. There, there, there have been there some. Rumors, if you if you care about the rumor side of things, that All Access is close to launching in Canada. But again, you know, believe it when you see it. Is uh, Much Music even still in business? <laughs> Do you remember Much Music? I, oh, I remember. Songs I actually are. was able. Yeah, they are. Yeah, there I you was, go. I was able to tune in Much Music when I was a kid on my Canada. TV. Canada's number one destination for and music was, videos. Felt so cool. You see, Canada's got universal health care and a TV station that plays music videos. What? They play music videos on yeah. much music? That's yeah. that's crazy talk. So. <laughs> there you go. All right, so then it would be RDO. Yep, and, RDO. Uh, RDO seems to be the solution. Honestly, RDO is a great solution. RDO is great. I used RDO for years. I yeah. RDO. yeah. And Sarah Lane, she she swears by our RDO. Yeah. And, you know, agrees that Spotify is a great service, but she finds everything she needs in RDO and swears by it. So and there you go. We've learned to listen to Sarah Lane. Yes. Yeah, it's <laughs> important. More than anything in our years. It's important. Yeah. She, she knows her music. <laughs> uh, but so do you. Uh, and I don't know. Do you know your music? Yeah, for the mm -hmm. most part. Okay. Yeah. I, I trust you. I believe you. I know my music. There's this great um, artist named Jason Howell. He's really good. Oh, yep. boy. Let's move into the arena. <laughs> Sorry, Chad. <laughs> so many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. Thank you. You're welcome. <sighs> Okay, last week we had th three, was it three? Four apps in the arena, and it was an epic battle. But in the end, Onavo ended up winning. Onavo was the data usage app. Uh, that was Gina's app, right? Yes, it was. And, uh, yeah, I had a really good feeling on that. It was really well designed. Yeah, I really knew that Really useful information way. about how you're using your data and, and uh, protection against not using more than you should. Right. Uh, so that came in first, 45%. Pocket Planets at 26%, second place. Dynamic Keyboard Pro, third place, 15%. Square Register. I'm surprised Square Register. I, I was shocked 14%. by the Square Register. I yeah. thought Square Register was going to run away with it. That was my um, yeah. thought. But really yeah. well-designed app and really good in usage. But if you've never used it, then you're like, okay. Yeah. I'm still on this Canada thing. Uh -huh. Apparently, there's a bunch of articles from September that's talking about Microsoft oh. uh, bringing Xbox Music to Android yes. and available in Canada. So. And that's in Canada as well. Yeah, there so. you go. There you go. Sorry. Oh, just, no, that's that's a really good point because yeah. we did actually talk about Xbox Music. Yep. Uh, we tried to figure out why we'd want to use it. Uh, if you live in Canada. But hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. another music service is another music service. Yes. Good. The more the merrier. All right. So, uh, based on the results, Ron, it appears you go first. Oh. 
the rundown had me as last, so oh, I was getting ready to relax. Okay, oh, that's yeah, no no relaxing for you. Okay, no relaxing for me. You lost. I lost. No relaxing. I lost. Yeah. So I'm, coming at, I'm coming at you with a, uh, <laughs> with a simple, elegant app that is also utilizing some new services that are available in the latest version of Android. <clears throat> the app is called Frozen LED, and basically what it does is it allows you to control the little LED light on your phone and control what applications use it, what color it is, how often it flashes, and gives you total control over that little dot, um, which is nice because on the, if you have a Nexus 4 like I do, and I can't line up my shot, if you have a Nexus 4 like I do, um, right here, you can't really see it, but that's where a little dot comes when there's a notification. And historically, it's been that white kind of dot, mm -hmm. and it kind of slowly pulses. And I was actually at the movies the other day, and I had my phone in my pocket, like, uh, topside down, and I got a text message, and I had my my ringer off, whatever, but there was just this white glow mm -hmm. coming out of my pocket. Yeah, which is like, whoa. Anyway, so um, so what Frozen LED scary. lets you do is, and we can go into the app right now. We can take my shot. Cool. Um, we'll go into the app, and there are two kind of categories that it allows you to set not uh, to set the notification light for. You can specify apps, or you can specify specific text or names. Oh. I'll get to that in a moment. Mm -hmm. So within apps, I'm going to add a new app. And basically, I can uh, it loads this up, and I could utilize the drop-down list and choose the various apps I have. If I hit that, there you go. So I can pick which app I want. So if for some reason, let's say I'm going to go to Falcon. So when Falcon Pro has a new notification for me, I want that. I can use this color wheel to pick the color. So I'm going to go to like a pink, and I can adjust the hue. I can make it lighter or darker, you know, whatever I want to do there, right? And then I can also change the speed of the notification. Um, so now this is great, and you got to wonder, okay, I, okay, how does it look? So what you can do is up here you hit test, and then it gives you this little um, pop-up, and you have to turn off your phone, and then it will Ooh. test what you're doing. Pretty cool. That come on. Oh, yeah. Is it? Oh. So pink. we're going to cut away so I can put my code in again. Thank you. Uh, I should have turned that off, my bad. Um, and then when you come back to the app, um, you just dismiss it, and you can make your tweaks or whatever. So I'm going to say done, and I've added that. So now on the, the text and name side of things, I set it up so that if Jason texts me ever or calls me, it will flash red hint, because that's hint. alert, alert that you need to. Um, and if you want to <laughs> add something else, all you really need to do is you just type in by name, and you type in the name of whoever it is that you want or whatever the text that you want to trigger it, and it's interpreting every action and triggering that notification based off any sort of text. So wow. if I get some sort of, if there's a particular keyword that is like, oh, hey, I, I need to be notified when when I get a text with this word in it. If it says Android, I want green. Exactly, there you go. Um, what's interesting, though, is how it's able to do this is when you install the application, there are no tutorials, so I apologize, Chad. Um, but um, what you need to do is... Um, That's a plus. It is a plus, yeah. <laughs> In your phone settings, you need to enable notification access for the yeah. app, which is a new feature right. in in the latest version of Android. So when you launch it, it comes up with the thing saying, hey, you need to enable this in notification access. Unless you do this, none of these changes will work. So that's important to note. So And it, it makes you do that when you launch the app in the first place. Right. Um, within the settings, you can set a special notification for missed calls where you can have this app handle missed calls or not. Um, whether or not you want to manage calls on their own or not, it, it, it has a special breakout. And it's basically the same kind of settings. You can change the color and the pulse speed of the, of the image, or you can just turn off missed calls a, a, along. Um, and then also you can uh, specify how you want it to handle minimum priority, which is any notifications with priority below the selected priority will be ignored. So um, these are for other apps that um, might use notification, but uh, use the LED, but you don't really want them to pop up. You can spec specify the priorities of these notifications. Um, and then, of course, you can also uh, have more control over your little LED light by ignoring ongoing notifications. So if you have music players or chat heads or anything like that, and you want to ignore their use of it, you can override it with this application. Hmm. So that little dot on your phone, if you ever wanted some more control over it, uh, Frozen LED gives it to you. It's free in the um, in the Google Play Store. I want to say the Android App Store. It's free in the Google Play Store. Um, and again, you know, like if you're bored of that little white dot and you want to get a little more control over what's happening, now you can. So awesome. There you go. That's how I you love do it. it. That's how you do it. Now I just need I to like send that. you a text. 
Exactly, to see if that. It, yeah, yeah. Do you want to try it? Awesome red color. Well, because well, no, you're set up to do your app. I don't, I don't, don't want to send you a text message. I should make my fiance download that because he always misses my notifications. Well, here's, text well now, yeah. here's now I'll be the devil's advocate. Can I make it turn into like a. You can make it. Yeah, wait. Go yeah, crazy we'll do, fast. We'll, yeah, we'll do, we'll, we'll do it with it's the fastest. Alarm. Yeah. You're like, excuse me. Excuse we me. We'll do it the fastest uh, mode there. Okay, so you can do 2,000 milliseconds, right? So I'm going to save that. Well, how do I. I can't test it. Oh, that's interesting. You got to add a new one to test it. Let's ignore this live demo. So, <laughs> all right, we're going to do that. We're going to make it red. And we're going to hit test. All right, so this is the fastest uh, pulse. Oh, okay. That's hmm. still pretty slow. That's not fast enough for me. <laughs> or maybe it's the other way around. Wait, let me see. Hang on. Hmm. That still is pretty quick, though. Pulse speed zero. That might just be on. Yeah. Yeah, that's just on. on. Okay. Yeah. So then if I okay. Although that would that would probably work. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Ah, just it's leaving it on. Okay. There you go. Let's try this one last one. All right. And there we, uh, there there we, we go. That's the one we oh, want. Okay. Yeah. So there we go. Right, so that's that a pretty good You see now now this is now this is where I play devil's advocate with this app, which is uh it's very cool. I like that you can change the colors. I don't know if this gets my attention. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I still think a little more vibrate and a little stuff like that. It's very subtle, but uh, but yeah, but hey, you can change but the color you know, once you get used to having to look down there for. I'll be honest, hot I, pink I, notification. Yeah, to be honest, well, I'm at work, I'm there working, and I have my phone on my desk, yeah. and I will, in my peripheral vision, pick up that dot. Yeah, more so than I than I would imagine I would. So maybe totally. it, maybe maybe I'm full of it. Go download it. Vote for it. Do it. Yes. Frozen nope. LED. I can't remember the last time I won an arena. Please vote. <laughs> oh. oh, man. <laughs> I, went uh, for the I went for the pity. <laughs> uh, so, Shannon, how are you going to win this week? Uh, how are so, you going to beat Ron? Way to set the bar there. <laughs> yeah, I've never won one, so I think it's my turn to yeah, win. There you go. Oh, there you go. That no. works. That works. Oh. Raise the roof. <laughs> what do you got today? Okay, so you know I'm really big into like security and forensics mm -hmm. and the whole IT thing because I do Hack Five, which you can find at hackfive.org, by the way. And you should. And um, so one thing that I recently checked out was a comparison between a whole bunch of secure texting applications that are for Android, mm -hmm. one of which was also iOS. Um, these are extremely important if you want to send somebody a text message that includes like banking details or includes like um, like somebody's birth date that you don't necessarily want to give out or somebody's phone number, et cetera, et cetera. So what these apps will all do is encrypt the text messages when you receive them, when you send them, and when they're just sitting on your phone. And you'll have to have some kind of username and password to get into the application every single time that you want to open it. So this week, I wanted to go ahead and check out my favorite one, which is called Text Secure. So you can find this at whispersystems.org. This is a free one as well. And uh, it's, they say that it's going to come out for iOS soon, but currently it's just for Android. So the nice thing about this is it lets you send text as well as MMS, video and audio. I personally like it because it's really, really easy to use. And you can look up the source code on GitHub. So it's open source, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the applications I checked out was called Wicker. That one is not open source. So you basically have to give them this inherent trust that they're not doing anything. There's no back door. This one, on the other hand, is open source. So you know that it's going to actually be encrypted and you don't, you don't have to run into any of those problems. So the encryption on this one is, I believe I wrote it down. Oh, I didn't write it down, but... Uh, basically, what this one does is takes the place of your regular text messaging uh, application that comes on your Android phone. It, it replaces it completely. So one of the cool things about this is you can even transfer, transfer all of your unencrypted text messages from the past into the application and just start using that. Oh, cool. And everything will be encrypted inside of the text message or inside of the application. So I have it pulled up on my phone. And that's what the icon looks like, text secure. So I already logged into it and it'll, it'll just ask for your regular username whenever you log in. So I have a whole bunch of different people that are text messaging me. So I get messages from T-Mobile and whatnot. And then I have a message from my friend, Sarah. So if I click into that and I have a little black bar here because it does show their full, full phone number up at the top. Smart. Yeah, I was like, I better take care of that now uh, before yeah. forgetting about it later. So over here, it's going to show me my Google Plus uh, icon. 
my actual picture. And then over here, if she had Google Plus, it would show up for her as well. Now, Sarah doesn't have Tech Secure. So everything that I'm sending her is going to be unencrypted uh, whenever it leaves my text messaging service. However, if I go back, I have Darren Kitchen up here. Luckily, Darren does have Tech Secure. So what I can do with him is I can send him a little key pass, which is basically a private and public key sharing, uh, which makes everything that I send him, all the text messages, encrypted. So when I do that, it'll say key exchange message, and then it will uh, have him approve that key exchange message. So it'll say received and processed key exchange message. And then he can text me back and everything is going to be encrypted with that little lock. Oh, okay. So even during transfer between our two phones, we're not going to have anything that shows up as plain text. Awesome. Very, very nice. Yeah. yeah. So this is extremely important if you are super paranoid like I am when it comes to text messaging people, important information. I like it a lot. And that is text secure. Yay. Excellent. Yeah. Hard, yeah. Hard to argue that lock. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Um, I like it. It's super simple. You know, there's nothing bright and pretty about it, but it is really easy to use. So it's, it's secure. Do you need yeah. bright and pretty for secure? Like, yeah, right. <laughs> Some yeah, people yeah. want functional. And, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So. Awesome. So that is text secure, one, one word, and uh, that is free at the Play Store as well. Uh, awesome. Mine, uh, mine's going to be pretty quick and that's okay because it's, you kind of get it right off the top. It's called smash the office. <laughs> there are many, that many times. I, I'm noticing a theme in your, in your, in the games. You're <laughs> many, many times when all I want to do is smash the office. So let's do it here. So basically it's a game. You're a dude in an office. Smash the office. Make high score. You move around. Ready. It's so Japanese. <laughs> Something the phone is like it's super. Oh. Yeah, you just go around, you smash stuff. Oh, that's awesome. You know, you might not be able to do very no, much to. Uh, don't kill the servers. Ah, ah, just want to, you know, destroy these computers. And you get levels up, level ups, and you get like, uh, you can get golf, golf clubs, and get out of my way, chair. There, there's really not a whole lot to it. You oh, just wow. kind of go just through, just through them, and man. Yeah. you can just go to town, you get coins, and uh, it was not laggy like this last time. So, there Maybe you go. because there's, you're mirroring. Oh, and now I'm in like Whoa. super mode, so I could go in there and just go to town. Whoa, look it's at all a, those fog cabinets. You know, it's just really satisfying to take a bat <laughs> to your office. <laughs> to your there office you sometimes. What was that bouncy thing? Was that a power-up? Yes, there are power-ups and obviously coins all throughout. Oh, man, because, you know, I have controller. so much money in my file cabinets. There you right. go, see? So you just you, you, you destroy stuff, you get money, and you, you upgrade your weapons, and there's really not a whole lot else to it, but it, it's fun. It's, it's totally a killing time game, basically. There's not a whole lot to it. It does sync up with uh, through the Google Music service so your high scores can be saved to the cloud. Ooh, he's got a creepy up. face. Oh, there he's we go. angry. He's clearly angry. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha um, ha. Yeah, there you go. That's that's pretty much it. Smash the office. Oh, hold on. Uh, Yay! Get, you know, relieve some stress. How about that? Some slave tech. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> See? 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 Yeah, smashing stuff. It's, it's fun. That's, that's about if all If you there. liked office Go to space. the executive suites, yeah. bang, you know, bash those up. It's it's a great time. I like how it's, it's, it's in the title. It's smash the office. Stress fix. I know. Yeah. And that was exactly what caught my eye. I was like, hmm, maybe I need this. This is like a stress ball in the Android world. <laughs> so there you have it. Uh, frozen LED, text secure, and smash the office. Go to AAAPoll.com slash 129 for episode 129. And vote for your favorite, AAAPoll.com slash 129. Early reports are in. Tech smash Secure and Smash the Ooh. Office. I have hope for Frozen LED. <laughs> hey, Good luck, Ron. It's a little app that can, you know? It's yep. a, <laughs> I've always wanted that light to be blue. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so we'll check in on that next week. Uh, speaking of next week, John Fingus returns from, of cool. Engadget. Super happy to have him back on board. We actually scheduled it like a month and a half ago, and he picked this date because he was like, you know what, the new Nexus, we're probably going to know all about it by then, so <laughs> let's do it. 
I don't know. <laughs> You're going to have to hold him to that. I know. It's starting to look like maybe we won't, but who knows? Maybe we will. He might know about it. I, ooh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. NDA. Maybe I wasn't yeah. supposed to say anything. Yeah. Uh, but Shannon, it's awesome having you on the show. Yes. Thank you so awesome much. It was awesome to be here. Yeah, this is a fun show to be on. I yeah. like it. Yeah, we like it. All the other shows are home. so boring. No, I'm yeah, just kidding. Right. <laughs> I'm not going to say it, but yeah. Uh, so it's, it's awesome having you on. You do, obviously, Before You Buy I do. for Twit and yes. uh, just a whole bunch of other stuff. So yeah. go ahead and talk about what you got. Um, I do Hack5 over at hack5.org, of course. We also have ThreatWire and my hack tips over there as well, so you can check those out. And then over here at Twit, I do Before You Buy, which you can find at twit.tv slash BYB. And I also just started producing Know How. Uh, we just had Father Robert Balasser join the show, so definitely check that out if you're interested in seeing what Ayaz Akhtar and he have to show us. It's kind of a maker show now. It's really, cool. really fun. Yeah, yeah, it is. I'm loving it. Yeah, it's <laughs> an awesome show. Um, cool. Well, you're doing awesome stuff, and oh, we're going to have you back. At Snubs on Twitter. There you go. If you want to follow me there. That is important. Uh, what about you, Ron? Same old, same old. You can find me at about.me slash ronxo, where you got links to my uh, Google Plus, which I want to use more. Uh, Facebook and Twitter and all that fun stuff. Come follow me. It's always a good time. And by day, I'm over at Image Comics at imagecomics.com where we're publishing comics like Saga and The Walking Dead and great stuff. And you can get them all digitally at imagecomics.com or uh, on the Image Comics. Uh, there are apps out there and all this fun stuff you can do. Wherever finer comics are sold. Exactly. And if you're in the New York area, I won't be on the show next week because I'll be in New York prepping for the New York Comic Con. And so I will be there uh, at the con. So if you're going, stop by, say hello, show me your phone. I love it when people... Walk out of uh, from the all about Android community, uh -huh. and they, they all it's the same thing it happened at San Diego too. Like, oh, hey, Ron, I love the show, and they pull out their phone and show me their phone. So, the phone I so I, I, let's go oh, with that. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna embrace it. Let's just show me your what, phone. One of these days, they're yeah. gonna show up and they're gonna pull their Nexus Seven out from their back pocket, and then and you're gonna and be like I'll, super fan. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> So, yeah, so. Uh, awesome. Uh, have fun next week. We'll miss Thanks. you, of course. Chad, what's up? Hey, um, uh, every, nothing. <laughs> well, hey. Nothing, nothing's up, uh, Jason. Uh, that's it. <laughs> now, um, I video switch, of course, all about Android. I also do the audio um, over here. Uh, I do personal stuff at youtube.com slash OMG Chad. I host a show about YouTube uh, this week in YouTube. I host a show about Minecraft, OMG Craft. For the past three weeks, I've been helping out with the Gizwiz while Leo is away. And then I produce uh, Twit, Twig, and MacBray Weekly. So also go check out those shows as well. Jason, what, what have you what, been up? Was that, a, was that a jury or a fly behind you? <laughs> I, think, uh, I think it was uh, might, have, might have been a jerk. It was, might have been that, a jerk. That was very, very interesting. I'm not sure what exactly <laughs> happened there, but anyways. No, and no, of, no. Course, of course, watch the, the LG G2 review on Before You Buy, which is a show that Shen <laughs> produces. <laughs> oh, yeah, see that? That. You missed it again. The heck? What are you been up to, Jason? I like somebody in the chat room said, is that a hobo? <laughs> <laughs> no hobo. No hobo. No hobo. No hobo. No hobo. Uh, About.me slash Jason Howell or yellowgoldmusic.com if you want to uh, wait for me to actually have an announcement about the album that I promise is coming very soon. Uh, so check there, yellowgoldmusic.com. Uh, and real quick, Reddit folks. So we have an all about Android Reddit uh, Reddit page. If you go to twitaaa.reddit.com, we've got a number of people pitching in right there. We could use a lot more. ICU, Slashtop, uh, Kyle, uh, just uh, James, James Z 668 I know I'm Some, missing. Someone by the name of Comment seems to be on uh -huh, it Captain lot. Kipper uh, and Comment, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Comment is, is all throughout here. Uh, anyways, uh, I would I would appreciate uh, if you guys want to uh, check this out. If you vote up stories, we're going to be more likely to actually include these, and it actually really does help me, especially yeah. on a day like today where it doesn't seem like there's a lot of news to talk about. It's prime time for me to kind of pop in there and pull some suggestions out from there, and maybe we have missed something in our planning. So check it out. It's uh, twitaaa.reddit.com. I'm going to be plugging that more uh, with future shows. So there you go. That's it for this week. Leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. Leave us an email. Drop that at aaa at twit.tv or a link to a video. It becomes a video mail. And keep the video, by the way, uh, short. 30 seconds. Yes. Under a minute tops. We got, we got one that was like three minutes, and it was a great point, but it was just too long. So keep it short. Twitter, we are uh, at Android Show. We're also on Google+. And you can find show notes and past episodes at twit.tv slash aaa. All of our past episodes are there, as well as YouTube and iTunes. 
And finally, uh, we are live every Tuesday starting at 5 p.m. Pacific, live.twit.tv. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android.